everybody we are back and we are looking at bitcoins and today we are looking at the regulation um, in Kenya that is um, currently there and we are going to look at Central Bank of Kenya and what they said where Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are concerned. I have with me Raymond, engineer Raymond and he's going to help us to just demystify this whole thing. So Raymond today what I want us to look at is this public notice um, in December of 2015, there was a public notice that Central Bank of Kenya issued. And basically what they were saying is, please guys, if you trade in these things, kindly note that they are not regulated and the Central Bank of Kenya regulates the Kenya shilling and not um, virtual currencies. And they, they said three key things that I want us to just um, okay. interrogate. Yeah? One was transactions in virtual currencies such as Bitcoin are largely untraceable and anonymous, making them susceptible to abuse by criminals in money laundering and financing of terrorism. The other thing that they said was virtual currencies are traded in exchange platforms that tend to be unregulated all over the world. Consumers may therefore lose their money without having any legal redress in the event these exchanges collapse or close business. The third thing they said was, there is no underlying or backing of assets and the value of virtual currencies is speculative in nature. This may result in high volatility in value of virtual currencies, thus exposing users to potential losses. So I'd like us to address each of these issues. The first of which is that these transactions are untraceable. Is it true that they are untraceable if you trade or you buy Bitcoin on the internet? Yeah, thank you, Rina. Uh, it's not entirely true uh, because when you download a, a Bitcoin wallet and house it either at your smartphone or your laptop or your desktop, uh, those are digital prints, you know. So uh, every wallet is housed somewhere and every device has an IP address. So if you needed to find out, you know, where my Bitcoin wallet is, you know, with good knowledge of IT, you can track down my IP and, you know, know this is where my Bitcoin wallet is. Yeah. So it's not really true that you cannot trace, you know, where a Bitcoin wallet is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the second one they said was virtual currencies are traded in exchange platforms that tend to be unregulated. So you might be able, you might lose your money and there's no legal redress or back or um, in the event that the exchange collapses. Yeah. Well, uh, that again is uh, it's a catch too in the sense that if you look the world over, most Bitcoin exchanges are licensed by government. Uh, and most exchanges get given the license of a Forex Bureau. There are many Forex Bureaus in Kenya today that operate. Now, uh, to, if you look at most of them, they employ self-KYC. Okay. Meaning that before I register, before I trade with any Bitcoin exchange platform, they would have asked me for my ID, yeah. for my proof of address, you know, uh, something to show, you know, that I'm a bona fide, you know, Kenyan citizen. Yeah. So again, uh, every Bitcoin exchange platform that I know out there has every record of every person who, you know, trades with them. Okay. So again, uh, if, if, if government wanted to, I mean, if, if you look, Three months ago, for example, in China, yeah. the People's Bank of China uh, went to the top three exchanges just to do KYC to make sure that all the exchanges were, you know, self-regulating. Yeah. And they discovered every record was there. Okay. Uh, so it's not really true that, you know, you cannot, uh, that they are not regulated. Yeah. Um, every one of them does self-KYC. And so in an event, well, like, would you say this for other cryptocurrencies or this is just Bitcoin? It's the same now. All the other cryptocurrencies, uh, if let's say you have Ethereum today, mm -hmm. and Rina, you wanted to convert that to Kenya shillings, yeah. you first need to convert Ethereum to Bitcoin. Oh, is it? So Bitcoin is like mm. the SI unit for all cryptocurrencies. It doesn't matter which coin you have. I guess it's like the US dollar exactly. and other hard so currencies. So you convert it back to Bitcoin, yeah. and then from Bitcoin, it can be dollars or shillings or pounds. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And then lastly, that there's no underlying or backing of assets and the value of virtual currencies is speculative in nature so it could spike up and go back down and you know and so please be careful as you trade these currencies okay. well i guess that's a, a very safe statement to make well it's true it's like me telling you today that uh, here in gigiri the cost of an acre of land tomorrow could be tembo <laughs> it's possible <laughs> but it's yeah. highly unlikely, unlikely. Yeah. and if you look at a commodity like gold there is nothing really backing it yeah. 
it's it's the people who accept gold give it back. Yeah. The people who accept Bitcoin have decided that Bitcoin has value worth four thousand dollars. So it's really supply it's demand. Supply and demand, yeah. 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 So supply and demand. Yeah. It's not really uh, up to government to set, you know, to give it back. In. But the important thing here that I have actually understood is that it's not illegal. It's not. It's just that CBK is saying trade with caution. Yeah. And just know that we do not regulate or any issue. or issue. We don't regulate any exchange. We don't regulate the currency. Yeah. We don't issue the currency. And so you would be completely on your own should you decide to go ahead with it. That's correct. And and not only is the Central Bank of Kenya. If you look at central banks worldwide, starting with the U.S., you know, going to Australia, all those countries. Initially, most governments, when they see Bitcoin, they issue cautionary statements. Okay. Uh, if you look at uh, a country like Russia initially banned Bitcoin and then a few years later lifted the ban. Mm. You know, the other day, you know, they are saying now they want to make sure that people in Russia can pay taxes using Bitcoin. Taxes? Yeah, taxes. Using so the Bitcoin. government is accepting Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah. The biggest, the country that has the biggest use of Bitcoin is Japan. Okay. Uh, Japan today accounts for over 50% of Bitcoin transactions worldwide. Wow. You are talking a hundred million dollars a day, you know, worth of Bitcoin transactions. And uh, that was from April 1st. So it's only a matter of time, you know, before wow. countries in, in, in Africa, Kenya, adopt you know, this adopt thing. this. But for me, I would like Kenya not to always play catch up. Yeah. You know, we are ahead already with them. person. We should not be behind with Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm not being left behind. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe. I have more questions for Engineer Raymond. This is Rena Hicks and you're on MoneyWise, where we create growth and preserve wealth.